Good morning. Hello. <laughs> and welcome to Wednesday. This is a bit weird. <laughs> Chatting on a Wednesday. So yes, Wednesday witchcraft. Welcome, welcome, welcome. If you are watching, do pop a hello in the comments. I'm hoping there'll be people watching because <laughs> I know I've been really awkward and switched it to a different day. But needs must, as they say. So, uh, good I'm, morning, Lizzie. I'm here. You're here, here. You're there. And Eric's there. Oh, he's there. There we are. <laughs> Eric's there. Hello, Eric. Hello, Eric. Hello, Eric. Good morning, Heather. Good morning, Helen. Good morning, Sue. Good morning, Kerry. Good morning, Karen. Lots of lovely people. Thank you for joining me on a Wednesday. <laughs> good morning, Jay. Good evening, Sephora. Uh, good with daylight saving changes. Can I watch and eat dessert? Bonus. Bonus. <laughs> good morning, Trudy. Good morning, Angela. And he's gone. <laughs> <laughs> that was it that was it he's gone to seek some sunshine good morning lots of lovely people thank you so much for hopping over to wednesday instead it is very much appreciated uh i've lost who i've said hello to now so good morning good morning judy good morning angela good morning sue good morning damien wow good morning deb good morning colin good morning little miss Message to my late father, it's Wednesday. Oh, okay, message to your late father, it's Wednesday. Okay. Good morning, Emma. You can join us. Excellent, excellent. Oh, well, have a good day, Emma, when you have to disappear. Good morning, Janet. Good morning, Hannah. Good morning, Chris. Good morning, Kerry. Good morning, Sasha. Wow, thank you, people, for joining me on a Wednesday. I was terrified I was going to be sitting here talking to myself. Although I always get the right answers when I talk to myself. <laughs> Colin, it's wet there and you have the heating on. Yeah, it's a bit grey and dreary in the south of England today too. Oh, hello, you're back, are you? You're back. There we are. <laughs> is it not sunny out there, is it? No. Nice. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, Emma, it's mum's birthday. Happy, happy birthday, happy birthday to you. Let's not going to sing. No, not going to sing. Lizzie, we did have spring yesterday. Today we have autumn. <laughs> you are correct. It is. It's the Kalak. She's fighting back. Good morning, Marianne. Good morning, Kelly. Good morning, Karen. Oh, thank you, people, for joining me. I am relieved. <laughs> Very relieved. Sue says sunset's dull, grey and wet. Yeah, that's pretty much what we've got. Pretty much what we've got. But hey-ho, it's April. It's got to get better, hasn't it? So a couple of weeks ago at the Wild Witchcraft Conference, a very lovely lady came up to me and asked if I would talk about tarot cards at one of the chats, but from a very easy, simplified point of view and how to relate them to each day. So that's what I'm going to talk about today. How do you work with your cards, tarot or oracle? Do you do a draw a day? And how do you relate them to your day? And how do you read them? A simplified way of, re way of reading them. Share your thoughts. Share your thoughts. Good morning, Amanda. Uh, good morning, Christine. YouTube's being a bit pedantic today. That's that's surprising. It's, it's normally Facebook. <laughs> Good morning, Andrea. So yes, tarot and oracle cards today, but a very simplified, how do you work with them? Kind of, you know, draw a card in the morning and see what it does for the day. So we'll have a look at how I do it, which obviously because it's me, is going to be very simple. <laughs> Nothing complicated. <laughs> Um, Zephora. <laughs> Zephora is going to say glorious day here in New Zealand it's autumn sunny clear skies I've never visited my dad lived there for a while said it's the most beautiful place ever so a little bit jealous <laughs> good morning Alish uh, right let's get let's get some of these up shall we 
Hannah, I've worked with reading cards occasionally, but I've yet to work with the tarot. Okay, we're going to go through a very simplified way, way of doing it. Good morning, new Wednesday morning to you too, Maria. Thank you for joining me. <laughs> Kelly says, I have both oracle and tarot cards. Tend to draw an oracle card each day when I remember to help set an intention for the day or to get some advice for the day. I think the drawing the card a day is a brilliant idea, particularly if you're learning the tarot or getting used to a new deck or a new deck of oracle cards. It can help you get some understanding of them. Which kind of Hannah says, don't really understand the need for a daily card. Several reasons for drawing a daily card. Lots of people do it. It can be that you get guidance for the day ahead. It can be that you are learning the tarot or learning a new set of oracle cards so if you draw a card in the morning you can have a look at the meanings what it means to you and then at the end of the day you can relate it back to the card so it might be for insight for the day it might be guidance for the day it might be because you're learning a new deck lots of reasons Lizzie, have used Oracle mostly, but recently began using the higher arcane tarot cards, always intuitively with very good results. That's my way of reading. Use your intuition. Sue, when I work with tarot, I have more books to work out what the cards mean than cards. Now, this is what I'm going to say to you today. Put the books away. <laughs> Get rid of the book. <laughs> Kerry, oracle cards I might read daily, tarot I'm more likely to do a full reading. I think that tends to be the case with a lot of people. Um, I work like that sometimes as well. Maria, even though I did a course, still look, sit there looking blankly at them. Hopefully I can help you today. Helen, never got on with tarot despite trying literally for years. Now that is the other thing. There are an enormous amount of different divination tools from tarot cards, oracle, pendulum, uh, crystal ball, runes, you're not going to take to all of them. I love the tarot. I love oracle cards. Uh, I'm okay with crystal ball and scrying. Runes, pff, they just look like, like, like little squiggles to me. <laughs> I cannot read the runes at all. <laughs> um, I leave that to Ness. She does them brilliantly. Uh, I do use runes to inscribe on candles for magical work but as for reading them whew. so there's you're never gonna connect with all of the tools and that's what they are they are magical tools the actual ability to read the actual psychic connection is within you all of these things are just tools to help you and to focus it i guess Sephora, a daily tarot card might have saved me from getting walloped by a spiky sweet chestnut shell right on the nose, bruised full of spikes. Oh no, that's very uncomfortable. Kelly, I started doing Sue's tarot branch lesson, which I'm really enjoying. Excellent. It helps you to trust your initiative and connect with the cards. Yes. Now, if you are a student of the Kitchen Witch School, the tarot branch lesson I wrote and ran as a course some time back, and then we moved it over to the branch lesson. So it is teaching tarot how I teach it, because I wrote the course, so that makes sense. And I'm going to touch briefly on how I do it um, this morning. Lizzie, books are only there to supply the author's opinions of what the cards mean. Now, I think if you've got an oracle deck, it can be useful to have a look at the book because oracle decks are random. They are whatever the author comes up with, she says. <laughs> having done produced one oracle deck already and having a contract to make four more. <laughs> Thank you, Animal Dreaming Publishing. <laughs> uh, tarot... The cards generally have the same meanings across all decks. But, and here's the thing, I think all of these things work better if you read them intuitively. Hannah, I like my witch's runes. Yes, I like working with the witch's runes. I can work with them, just not the normal runes. <laughs> Emma, I draw a card each day, but also three cards for the week. Tarot class is awesome. Need to go back. Excellent. It, it's, it is just a tool to channel your psychic abilities, your own psychic abilities. 
Damien, I read intuitively as I don't always get the same feeling with each card each time I pull it. Now that's the key as well. Whilst tarot cards have their general meanings across all decks, who you read for, the situation they're in, the cards that surround it are all going to have a different view. The, the card will change each time for each reading. If you just read the meanings out of the book, you're going to get the same thing every single time. If you read intuitively, then the meaning will change. There'll be a baseline, but the meaning will change with each reading that you do, with each situation for each person. And that's the key. I think that is when it works. Maria, do them when I need, feel I need some reiteration or guidance, which is what they're there for. Absolutely what they're there for. Lizzie, I've also used I Ching cards many years ago. Still have packs and might have a look at them again. Never worked with I Ching, one of the ancient ones. Kerry, I find tarot can be easier depending on the visual image. Now, that's the other thing as well. I love tarot decks that have lots of imagery. I don't like the decks that just have four wands. <laughs> I like the tarot decks that have lots of imagery. And I've got an example for you. You'll be very impressed. I have a PowerPoint presentation. Well, actually, I've got a couple of slides. It's not a real presentation, but I wanted to show you what I meant. I like the decks that have lots of artwork because it gives you lots to work with. And I find that when you look at a card with lots of artwork, each reading will bring something different out of that card for you one tiny aspect of that image might jump out at you in a particular reading and then the next time you do a reading that card comes up something else will jump out from the image at you that's how you read from an intuitive point of view and if you've got cards that have got lots of lovely imagery on them it makes life much easier Karen says, I pull an oracle card almost every day and a tarot card a couple of times a week. Do full tarot spreads on the Sabbaths, which is a nice idea. Uh, Maria, my mother to mother group loved your flower oracle cards and one has bought them. Thank you. Lizzie, tarot, yes, I agree. And the books are handy, but I reckon it's best to have a go first and then look. Yes, that would be my recommendation. Um look at the cards first without reading the book. You, you've got to connect with them without reading the book first. Hannah, does it, it become contradictory if you read them too much? You can read a, a card a day is not really too much. If you're doing a full spread every day, then you are going to find that you're going to get the same cards coming up over and over again if you haven't listened to them. Uh, yeah, I, I think you can have, for a full reading, you can do it too often. Absolutely. Card a day is more for guidance for the day. It's just one card, and it's also a good way to learn them. If you're doing full readings every day, then it can become a bit heavy and a bit um, confusing, really. Uh, but if you do read full spreads regularly and you're not listening, you will find the same cards come up over and over again. Jackie, I never read for myself as they never make sense to me. Not a problem when I read for others. I, to a certain extent, I find that myself. I find if I'm reading for myself, I see what I want to see, <laughs> which isn't necessarily what I need to be seeing. <laughs> Sephora, what are some really good imagery tarot? Funny you should mention that. I have some here to show you. <laughs> Uh, Chris, can't be doing with pip cards, better with pictures on them. I'm, I'm with you on that, Chris. I think the better the image, the more you've got to work with. Um. <laughs> Colin's cat is their weather vane. Cat's just come in soaking, so there's the weather report. Uh, Damien, I like magpie decks. I have one of those behind me. That is the deck that I work with most often. Um, so we'll have a look at that in a sec. Lizzie, my tarot packs are right away. like using them because of the origins. The artwork is dated and interpreting them is potentially hard at once. You get the general drift of things flow. It tends to be the most popular deck. It tends to be the deck that everyone starts with. I've tried it. I don't get on with it. And I think that's the other thing as well. You have to have a deck that you connect with. You have to connect with the imagery and the energy of those cards. 
if you don't it makes it very very difficult to read so i'll show you the ones that i've got if you've got any recommendations do pop them in the comments so phone <laughs> so one of the first decks that i started with <clears throat> was the thoth <laughs> It was the Thoth deck. These cards are huge too. This is a Crowley deck. Uh, I find this deck to be very brutal. The answers are very brutal. The readings are very brutal. Um, that's the chariot. So there's quite a lot of imagery on there. Um, let's have another look. Ace of Swords. I like it. Uh, I've connected with it. I read it if I, I read, I tend to use this one for reading for myself because it is the one that is very honest. <laughs> uh, the other deck that I love is Shadowscapes. Uh, this is the Shadowscapes. That's the full. It is beautiful. Absolutely beautiful deck. Uh, the amount of detail and imagery in the Shadowscapes deck is amazing. And the other one more recently is the Legacy of the Divine deck, which I haven't really used a lot, but it has some amazing imagery on it. So that's the Knight of Wands. It has some very stunning stuff, Page of Cups. Lots and lots of images, lots of detail. And I've got some cards here and I will get a thing up in a sec to show you. And we can have a look at a card together and see what we see. But let's have go through these first. Kerry, one of my favourite decks is Whimsical Tarot. As the images are based on fairy tales, nursery rhymes. Brilliant if you know the meaning and the folklore behind them. Interesting, I don't know that one. Uh, Karen, I have a set of tarot cards that I absolutely can't get on with. The imagery is just way too modern and I don't feel anything. They were a gift though, so I can't let them go. I have some decks that I bought thinking, oh, that would be amazing. Don't get on them at all. And I do gift them. Uh, Karen, my main deck is the Sacred Circle Tarot. I have that deck. I use that deck for spell work. Um, you can use all of the tarot cards or oracle cards as focal points for your spell working. And I keep the sacred circle tarot specifically for spell work. Trudy, I work with tarot and Celtic tree oracle at the moment. Full moon this week, so I tend to draw cards at this time. Full moon is brilliant. Full moon and dark moon, both very, very good for tarot work, divination of all kinds. Um, hi, Charlie. Uh, unicorn deck. Jackie, the deck I've used for the last 32 years is the unicorn deck. Nice. Debbie, plan to draw a card to see which goddess I could work with today. Then my phone beeped and you're talking about cards. <laughs> there you go. It's magic. <laughs> uh, Lizzie. Okay, let's go. I've got the Thoth. Thoth deck, which is brutal. Truthful and brutal. The most beautiful one is Shadowscapes by Stephanie Law Poy. Shadowscapes, absolutely beautiful. And the other one here is Legacy of the Divine. That's got some stunning artwork too. Those are the those are the three that I have used the most. Elise has the Thoth deck. It is brutal. I do like it. It is brutal though. Deb, I have a drawer full of oracle decks. Yeah, me too. I only have one deck of tarot. Brought other decks and found they didn't resonate with the cards. Uh, and you, you, you know, there are some that you will, there are some that you won't. It, it is the way that it goes. The Shadowscapes is stunning, Sephora. <laughs> Sorry, Angela. So if I don't need any more encouragement for more decks, it happens. It's one of those things. Maria, have six oracle decks and one tarot. Didn't realize I had that many. <laughs> They do call out to come home with you. They do indeed. Uh, Lizzie, recently bought Naomi Cornock's pack. Excellent for daily or now and then drawing. I have that deck of oracle cards too. The artwork, all of Naomi's artwork is stunning. You can just see the corner of my Sulis um, banner up there. That's a Naomi one. Yeah, amazing. Um, what the general thoughts on on Lenormand, Lenormand decks. 
Uh, lots of people use them. Uh, I, not my particular, you know, you have to connect with the deck. It has to resonate with you. You can read with playing cards. It, it has to work with you and you have to be able to connect with it. So I think it's a very personal thing. Uh, Chris bought the Bosch deck when they came out. It has so many new suits with only court cards. That they are difficult to figure out. The artwork is amazing. I haven't seen that one. Uh, Karen, I like Witch's Wisdom Tarot at the moment. Always use Shadowscape because I love the artwork. Shadow, it is. It's it's beautiful. Emma, grown attached to my Rider Wake deck given to me by my mum, but my Buffy the Vampire Slayer deck. I saw that. I haven't actually looked at it properly. Thank you. <laughs> oh, but you know the characters. Now that's the connection, isn't it? Uh, that is the connection. Uh, Maria says I have a whole shop. I I actually I've got rid of a lot. <laughs> Good morning, Anne. Um, Sephora says so. What's a good daily question to ask? Simple. What's happening today? What's in store for me today? What am I? What do I need to look out for today? Uh, Alish, my favourites are anything by Chiro Machetti. Tons of brilliant artwork. I'm making notes of all these. Maria, oh, yeah. looking forward to next day. Uh, yeah, I have signed a contract with Animal Dreaming Publishing to do four Oracle decks, all kitchen witchcraft themed. Um, we're working on the first one now. Uh, Karen, another favourite of mine is the Llewellyn Tarot. Lovely link to the Welsh myths and folklore. If you are drawn to a particular thing, then it's worth looking for um, tarot decks that are within that genre, definitely. Um, and I ask a daily question and get my help along the way. Um, yeah, it's it's an interesting way of connecting with your cards. It's an interesting way of seeing what's going to happen for the day. And if you are learning a new deck, it's a brilliant way of doing it because you can relate what happens to you in the day back to that particular card. So let me attempt to share my screen with you. Uh, this is always fun. Right, share, stop, X, share screen. There we are. Sorry, I've got to get rid of Eric. Sorry, Eric. <laughs> um, Stop snoring, Eric. Is he there? Yeah, he's, he's under there. a blanket. Right, window. There we are. Share. Now, hopefully, you can see that. She says, hoping that everyone can see it. Is it showing? Right, okay. So we've got three cards here, all the same card from the three different decks. This is the full. It is the first card in the Major Arcane. The first one, the big one, with the very funny look on his face and the horns, is the fall from the Thoth deck. The one in the centre is the fall from Shadowscapes, and the one on the right-hand side is the fall from the Legacy of the Divine. All the same card, all completely different artwork, but all with a huge amount of imagery inside. So pick one of the cards to look at, and then... I always say with tarot, say what you see. Don't think about it. Don't deliberate over it. Say whatever comes into your head and see which part of the image jumps out at you. So if I'm looking at the Thoth card, it might be that the tiger that's biting his leg jumps out at me. There's all sorts of weird things in the Thoth. If you look at the centre card of the fall, there's a fox there on the top of the podium. That jumps out at me. Fall on the right-hand side, it's the dog hanging on to his scarf. That will mean something, depending on what reading you're doing. It'll mean something for you if you're just pulling that card for the day. It will mean something if you are in a reading, and it'll relate to the car other cards that are either side of it. But I might come back to a reading several weeks later and pull the fall and the soft deck, and it'll be the crocodile at the bottom that jumps out at me. If you look carefully, there is a crocodile at the bottom. <laughs> I might pull the Shadowscapes card and there's a monkey there holding a tiny little heart. It might be that that jumps out at me. So each time you do a reading, something different will jump out from the card with you. 
and looking at the shadow scapes one in the center there is so much there there are there are doves there are flowers in her hair there are ribbons tied around her bodice she has a sun on her foot there's a fox there's a monkey there's a heart there's two bees there's a butterfly uh, in fact there's three monkeys on there there's a rose uh, there's a there's a golden orb so much going on there that you can take a reading from uh, the thoth card the crocodile the tiger there's flowers in there there's two bodies in there there's a dove there's butterflies there's the there's the healing sign there's ivy there's all sorts of stuff going on in there uh, and the legacy of the divine on the right hand side the dog the timer um the color of his outfit all the other cards that are there the jack in the box the stars just with that one card you've got so many different things to pick out so if we go to one that this is a card that scares a lot of people do not be afraid of the death card it is not scary it is about changes it is about endings and beginnings so in actual fact if you look at the right hand side one it might be the other way around in your screen the, the thoth one which is the black skeleton with the scythe he's cutting away he's cutting at ties there there's threads and cords and he's literally cutting them away lots of stuff going on in that one again it might there's a fish on there there's a snake there's a scorpion uh, there's shadowy figures in the background that's about releasing and letting go of old habits, old uh, memories, things that are you're hanging on to. If you look at the death card in the centre, it is beautiful and it is focusing on the phoenix rising from the ashes. But there is so much in that card, so much. There's red berries. There is the phoenix itself. There's irises at the bottom. There's sun there's swirls there's flames there are all sorts of things there's the wooden tree there's twigs all sorts of things going on and then in the legacy of the divine one you've got the skull so you've got the skeleton you've got the cobwebs so it's cutting away things again there's a scorpion there's a spider there's a white rose so much imagery and just by picking out one of those items, something will jump out at you from the card. You don't need the book to read it. If you've got the Shadowscape's death card and the Phoenix is the prominent thing in your reading, then that's all Phoenix imagery. That's about rebirth, renewal. That's about coming up from the ashes afresh. If you look at the Thoth card and it's the size that jumps out at you, then it is about making your own endings. It's about cutting ties and letting go just something small will jump out for you from the card and it'll be different each time so let it go back to my screen there we are uh, just a really quick example of the different artworks but how you can find and pick different things from it where you don't need the book you just trust your intuition and see which parts of the image jump out at you uh, let's go back to these lizzie one of my packs is the fairy pack by claire numand it's illustrated by daniel mayer very often used always on point thank you for these recommendations i'm sure that <laughs> everyone's shopping baskets are going to be heavy today um, we did that one colin i have nature of wicker oracle cards Hi hey Jane, uh, Debbie, the Wildwood Tarot and the Druid Oracle cards, I'm drawn to the symbolism. The Wildwood has amazing artwork, absolutely amazing artwork. Uh, Deb, I watch tarot reviews on YouTube, very useful. Yes, that's the other thing I think about tarot and oracle cards. If you buy them online, you can only usually see a couple of the cards. If you're in a shop, they don't often have the cards out for you to have a look at. So YouTube is brilliant because quite often people will show you the whole deck. It's very useful. Uh, 
Damien, when you do tarot, what's the card you love to see? Mine's the fool. I do find that as well, actually, when you, you're working with the tarot, um, there will be cards that you re that resonate really strongly with you. There will be often one or two cards that you don't like. <laughs> and for me, uh, it is the Hierophant. That card I do not like. Um, I think particularly in the Thoth deck, he's got masks all around the card with, with no eyes in them, and that freaks me out. <laughs> so I think there are often um, cards that you will connect with and don't. I actually quite like the death card. Um, it, it, it's one of my favourites. Emma, this week I picked the picked out the Oz, the Hermit, Naomi Cormac's death card, and Credwin from a Celtic Goddesses deck. Figured it might be a week to stay in bed no no not at all the hermit is about having time to yourself the hermit is about um you time uh death is just about changes and it's about releasing and letting go of things uh Kredwin is to me she's inspiration she's creativity and inspiration maybe you need to spend the week doing creative things N none uh, very very few of the cards will come out as being that's it it's the end of the world <laughs> and bear in mind that the tarot is just potential outcomes time changes things change uh, charlie i have more oracle than tarot and your fabulous flat oracle thank you no nearby shop mind body spirit shop to look at decks no it can be a problem tend to order online sometimes i think I like the image and then it turns up and it isn't right i think even if you've actually picked up the cards in the shop it don't necessarily resonate with you once you start working with them charlie i love browsing over decks in a shop sometimes they're sealed and there's no open deck but at least you can hold them in your hand and feel the energy yes it does help it does help maria oh, yeah. the death card would be good tied into a cord cutting spell i use tarot cards and oracle cards in spell work all the time and death would be perfect as a focus for a cutting cord spell Jackie, the Thoth deck also shows the signs. Yes, the, the Thoth deck has a lot in it. Um, like this one, the chariot has a crab on his head for cancer. Um, the sign, zodiac sign, sun sign. Uh, you'll find them all over. There's little symbols and, and imagery, um, sun signs, moon signs, all sorts of things in the background. It is about looking and paying attention and seeing it might be just that one little symbol that jumps out at you uh, kerry i find the best way to look through cards before buying is to see if there's a walkthrough on youtube it is very very useful very useful pixie maid hello long time no see thank you for being with us still wearing it still wearing it beautiful pixie maid jewelry my larimar or and my ball bracelet all made by Pixie Maid. Never take them off. Beautiful jewellery. Do go and have a look. And a very lovely lady too. <laughs> uh, Anne. Have loads of different oracle cards. Still trying to make my magpie deck. Okay, so let's have a... We've mentioned magpie deck. Now, a magpie deck is very fascinating. I have shown this before, but it is the deck that I use now all the time. A magpie deck is different for every single person. It is about creating your own deck. So my deck, <laughs> this is how many cards there are. That's a normal deck. That's my magpie deck. <laughs> what you do with a magpie deck is every single card is from a different deck. They're all different artworks from different decks. All different. But of course, the tarot deck has 78 cards. So if you're ending up with a magpie deck that has a lot more than that, you're going to get duplicates of some. I think this one has about eight different death cards in it. Um, <laughs> so there are duplicates. There's also some really wild ones. Um, there's the queen of stray cats. <laughs> um, you know, there's a wounded man there. There's some very, some really old ones from historic decks. Uh, that one's the fool. <laughs> Uh, they are ten of eyes. You can see that one is a bit white. Uh, the night owl. There's some very random cards. 
Um, but it's brilliant because you create your own deck. So it's tailor made to you. Uh, so you can take cards out if you don't if you like if you like some cards in a deck you can take them out and put them in your magpie deck if you don't like cards in sub decks throw them out or swap them with someone else you can end up creating your own deck it helps if they're all the same size obviously um, but you create a personal deck that works for you so you will resonate with every single card in that deck and they don't even have to be tarot cards there's a couple of cards in this deck from children's playing card sets <laughs> happy families mr bun the baker <laughs> if it means something to you and you know you can connect with it in a reading you can put it in your magpie deck called a magpie deck because magpies like to collect things so this is what this is it is collecting um your own deck there's even a couple of cards in here that do have runes on them uh the what i've got there five of keys oh there's a joker in it <laughs> there's a joker in the deck to me that's a wild card to me that's a you know we're not really sure what's going on here kind of card it has to mean something to you but putting together your own magpie deck means that every single card has a meaning and a resonance with you it may take some time to build your own magpie deck um, i was lucky enough to be in on a kickstarter project for this one it's the alleyman's tarot but they even suggest that you might find an image on the side of a cereal packet so you'll cut that out to the size of the card and you'll use that in your deck as well you can make it up out of anything that you want it to because these are just tools the the skill the psychic ability is within you but it's how you interpret the symbols as well um when a symbol jumps out from a card at you it has to mean something to you and it will be different from person to person um i had uh back many years back now when i had my mediumship training uh spirit gave me the image of a pair of leather trousers <laughs> i was like what is that supposed to mean <laughs> what, what what does leather trousers mean is it something to do with rock and roll or <laughs> and i had the picture of ross in the friends episode with the leather trousers and the talcum powder and the body oil <laughs> basically spirit was showing me a pair of leather trousers because the meaning they wanted me to get from it was a tight situation a difficult situation to be in getting stuck in something <laughs> and that was how they decided to show me and that was what the image meant to me <laughs> quite random quite oops, just bizarre but images will mean different things to different people so reading the cards intuitively is a very very straightforward way to do it you just have to learn to trust your intuition um, let's get some of these up. angela kyle gray angels and ancestors my go-to cards so beautifully illustrated the illustrations are very important which is cottage hey yeah, do have a look at which is cottage website as well some very very amazing seeds and planty herbalies do go and have a look uh kerry not keen on the tower or the seven of swords yeah no i can understand that um the tower like death is about changes but the tower is about changes that are going to happen whether you like it or not <laughs> forced changes uh and swords of all swords have got a bit i think swords get a bit of a bad rap um i think for me swords although they are not darker cards but although they are not such joyful cards as <laughs> for me they're a bit more about headology to coin phrase coin a terry pratchett phrase <clears throat> to me swords are about how you see things in your head not necessarily how things actually are or how they're going to play out but things how you see them in your head so they do become a little bit more easier to understand for me if i think about it from that point of view uh, little miss nemo also have the wildwood tarot beautiful but bought my daughter the moon garden deck because it was really girly pretty and not scary <laughs> I, I can remember having uh 
I think it was a witch's tarot deck. Uh, I have still got it. When my daughter was very, very young and she used to like looking through the cards and she used to, there was one with a strong man on it, on the strength one, had a strong man lifting weights. She used to say, that's daddy. <laughs> In the leotard. In the, yeah, in a little loincloth. <laughs> she loved looking through the cards. She's my baby. <laughs> Lizzie Credwin is a magician, transformative. Absolutely, absolutely. She created the uh, cauldron of inspiration. Uh, Jane, when I learned the Ride Awake Tarot, Alex and I went through every detail of the imagery. Then when we'd finished the course, Alex said, now forget everything I've taught you and just read what you see. Yep. <laughs> I felt lost with that. But after a bit of practice with a couple of willing friends, it's really working. It's how it should be. I use a card from Mildred Payne's Secret Pocket Oracle to pair with each Ride Awake card. And it's amazing how they back each other up. This is my go-to way of reading now. I, When I am working with a straight tarot deck, I quite often bring out uh, an Oracle card as a signifier or just as a clarity kind of one, a point of focus. They do marry together very nicely, tarot and oracle. But yes, absolutely. Uh, I, many, many years back, I did a Thoth course specifically on the Thoth and we went through every single detail on the cards. Uh, but I have a brain like a sieve, so I have forgotten most of them now anyway. But it is about reading that imagery. It is about using your intuition uh, and saying what you see. It is my go-to. Oracle cards, tarot cards, say what you see. Don't think about it, just say it and then go from there. Reading the tarot is like telling a story. Uh, I don't work with a spread specifically. I don't work with the, the Celtic spread or anything in particular. I lay three cards out, I lay three more, I lay three more. Usually in a full reading I'll do nine cards. Might pull out another one at the end just to clarify. But then I read and I don't necessarily read left to right, top to bottom. I might jump out. I let my intuition take me where I need to go to tell the story, to put it all together. Uh, Emma my creativity was me nursing a cold and crocheting. So Oz with his guitar was me chilling out in my own bed. And the change, I think, was my Georgie. Yeah, bless bless you for that. Bless him. He's up in the heavens now. Um, big change. Yeah, absolutely. That makes sense, Emma. It does make sense. <laughs> for, that's just showing off that magpie deck. It is a bit, isn't it? Shuffling it is a nightmare. <laughs> Lizzie, just pulled a card from the fairy pack and one of the lines resonates. Take your knowledge, cast it into the crucible of your heart and facts are transformed into truth. Oh, perfect. Nailed it. <laughs> Very apt for day. Absolutely. Uh, Damien, what do you think about secondhand decks? My dad gave me his first deck and they become very special to me. Perfect. I think if you are handed down a deck from a relation or a friend, then that's brilliant because it will have very positive connections for you and it will have memories. I'm also going to blow out the myth. Um, we did this in the Mythbuster chat a while back. You can buy your own tarot deck. There, there's a myth that was started by goodness knows who, goodness knows when, that said you have to be gifted your tarot deck. You do not. I've never been gifted any of my tarot decks. I have bought them all. And they all work fine. <laughs> um, so that's a load of rubbish. Uh, yeah, absolutely. And I think if you pick up a secondhand deck, and I've gifted lots of my decks that haven't res resonated with me. Um, if you've been gifted one, or you buy one in a secondhand in a charity shop or a thrift store, just cleanse it. Cleanse it with smoke or salt or whatever you feel it needs uh, and then work with it. As you begin to work with it, it will add your energy to it anyway. Uh, Charlie, the fairy pack by Claire Narmond. I had when I was much younger and it disappeared. <laughs> That's the fairies for you. Rebought it again. Wasn't sure if it would still resonate, but it does. I love it. It's so accurate. When you find a set that resonates with you, it is a joyful thing. <laughs> it is insight. Just like that. Dizzy. That was card 31, Fairy Lord of Phileas. 
Sephora. What's the difference between using tarot and using oracle? So the tarot decks are, other than the Magpie one, which is weird, standard tarot decks all have 78 cards. They all have 21 major arcane, major arcane, arcane, 22 <laughs> major cards. They're all the same. The Fall, the Tower, the Lovers, Death, um, the Magician, the Empress. They're all the same in all the decks. That Some of them might have slightly different names, but, you know, they're all the same. And then you have the four suits, cups, pentacles, swords, wands. They might be called staffs or coins, uh, but they will all be four suits. And they'll have uh, ace to ten and uh, then the court cards. They'd be the same template for every single tarot deck. It will just have different artwork on it, different themes. Oracle decks are different in that they don't have a set number of cards. Quite often they are 44 or 48 cards, but they do vary quite a lot. And they will be on completely different subjects. I think she says, looking for her deck of Oracle cards, which has disappeared. Because <laughs> I take them away and I use them elsewhere and then they disappear. going down to the third drawer in the hope that they're down here. Where are My oracle deck. No, they're not there. Um, so I'm going to show you the oracle deck. Um, so oracle cards have any number of cards to them, and they will be whatever the author wants them to be. They'll have keywords on them. So there might be a card for guilt. There might be a card for love. There might be a card for Can truth. Uh, I don't know what I've done with them. Yeah, take that one and open it if you would. It's sealed, that one. Uh, and I can show you what I mean. But they'll be on all different themes. You can get all sorts. My first deck happened to be photographs of flowers that were in a garden. Um, flower magic, because I work with it. But it might be dragons. It might be fairies. Uh, I have some a couple of oracle decks by Brian Froud, which are amazing. But they can be any all, any and all sorts. Now going free, slightly soiled. <laughs> second hand, second hand. <laughs> um, so let me show you. So oracle cards. So uh, courage. Dignity. Fruitfulness. They'll be whatever the author wanted them to be, uh, change. They'll all have a keyword, but they'll have completely different imagery on, and they're, they're all different artwork-wise, all different keyword-wise. Um, I'm working on oh, magical herbs at the moment. Let's see, I've got my list. So I've got uh, worries, success, prosperity, travel, jealousy, commitment, peace all different keyword meanings uh, so each oracle card will be different you can if you can read the tarot you should be able to pick up any tarot deck and get a decent reading from it oracle cards again are just tools so if you are used to reading and using your intuition you should be able to pick up an oracle card and work from the imagery or the keyword and use your psychic Ability, powers and such like uh, but they are different I quite like oracle cards for the drawing one each day because it gives you quite a clear idea of what's happening uh, and are they different sizes my magpie deck isn't my magpie deck the cards are all the same size I think for that it needs to be because you need to shuffle them and, and do readings with them but tarot decks come in all different sizes that's the thoth deck um, and that's the Shadow Scapes deck. They are quite different sizes. So there's no standard size for them. All, all variations. Colin, are we not all magpies in one way or another? Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> uh, Charlie, how do you decide what you put into a magpie deck? Do you have to make sure you have one or more of every card so nothing is missed? Or do you trust it's missed out for a reason? I think all of the above, Charlie. I like my deck because it has got at least one of all of the cards, but then it's got some really random ones in it as well, which are fabulous. 
Um, it really does prompt your reading and make your readings interesting when you get random cards. <laughs> um, I think it has to be down to you. I think if you have at least one of every card that you're covered, your bases are covered. But if you don't feel that way, then you don't have to. I think that's the beauty of the Magpie deck. You start building it and see where it leads you, really. Uh, Kelly, I have the Light Seers Tarot, which is the first one I've connected with. Love the images. It has to resonate to you. Absolutely has to resonate for you. Maria, I bought seeds and witches' bells from Witches Cottage. Yes, do have a look. They have some beautiful things. Heather, I've also heard that using cards makes it less frightening for those being read for, as it could be unsettling for them if the reader uses intuitive messages without them. Yes, we were at the Wild Witchcraft Conference a couple of weeks back, and uh, Merlin did talk about tarot, which was fascinating. And he said, throw the book away <laughs> um, and read intuitively. But yes, he made the point. If you go to a tarot reader and they put the cards out in front of you, it forms a barrier between you and the reader. It's a kind of safety fence. <laughs> and it gives you something to look at. You can look at the cards and follow what's going on. If you were to just sit face to face with the reader, and I have done it, psychic mediums do it, where they'll just sit with you and hold your hands. It can be quite scary. It can be quite uncomfortable to just get your reading with no tools. It's a little bit freaky sometimes. I think the tools are a bit of a safety net, really. Jane, swords look a bit terminal, but I think they are metaphoric. Look to see if there's any blood. If there isn't, then they are prompting you to look more deeply into them. Yeah, it is about headology. It is about thinking. The swords are all about thinking stuff and, and using your little grey cells. <laughs> Absolutely. But yeah, they're swords. They're sharp. They kill people. Yeah, it's the imagery can be a little bit scary with that, can't it? Uh, little Miss Nemo, Daddy is a strong man. Yeah, my little girl loves one of the hanging man images um, because he's quite dishy and anatomically correct and upside down. <laughs> Perfect. <laughs> Kerry, I bought a cheap pack of cards for using in spell work, putting on vision boards, etc. As I don't want to use the ones I read from. Uh, yes. I have a couple of decks that I don't necessarily resonate with for reading, but I use them in spell work. They can be used for meditation purposes as a focus. Uh, that's oracle or tarot cards. And they can be used in spell work as well. You can use that one card as a main focus for your spell work uh, to direct the energy, to direct the focus of the spell. Hi, Kay. Kay is a very talented tarot reader. When I read for people, I will always do a spread with tarot, then back it up with the unicorn deck. They do, don't they? They're, it works very nicely together. Uh, Jane, tried making a magpie deck with all the random odd cards I've acquired. Trouble is, they're all different sizes. Yeah, so I'd have to copy, resize, and laminate all the best to make a deck. Can't be acting. <laughs> yeah, it is about finding the right size ones. Some of them may have to be trimmed or, yeah, it's, um, it is a labour of love. <laughs> um, mine was made for me so I did cheat really <laughs> Karen I bought all my tarot decks except one and that's the one I can't get on with it's funny isn't it I only have one oracle deck so far that was a gift and I love it you have it has to resonate with you otherwise you're not gonna get that connection and not gonna be able to do a reading oh yummy Beetroot and orange, is it? Latte? Raspberry Ripple. Oh, is that Raspberry Ripple one? It's very nice. <laughs> Karen, my friends just bought me Mr. Avalon deck. Couldn't believe how much the first card I drew resonated with me in my situation. It's nice, isn't it, when it works? <laughs> Hey, when I read for someone, I always remind them that they have their own free will, whether or not to take the advice of the cards and reading. Absolutely. The cards are a possible outcome uh, and lots of things can come into play to change that outcome emma i sold my animal divine tarot deck because it didn't resonate with me but it was a beautiful deck i do miss it but if it wasn't working for me i felt it was nice to let someone else use it instead perfect 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 i'm all right 
oh. <laughs> because he wants to buy the second hand back. <laughs> Uh, little is new. I think Tarot is a French form of Tarotchi, and we're just playing cards. They were indeed. So the original imagery would have been pips plus archetypes. Uh, yes, I have got some history somewhere. Have I got it on here? That's the question. I don't think I've got it on there. Um, I'm just looking. Just talk about yourselves for a minute. <laughs> uh, no, I got some information up there, but I did. Yeah, there is a whole history to it, uh, and it did uh, evolve as playing cards. I think there is some history on the forum, if you want, in the Kitchen Witch forum, if you want to have a look. Um, morning, Louise. At Sephora, very good point. Won't the message be the same whether it's Tarot or Oracle? Yes, and it will be the same message no matter how many times you do a reading. <laughs> if you keep doing a reading to try and get a different answer, ain't gonna happen. <laughs> the cards will just keep telling you the same thing. <laughs> whether it's the Tarot, the Oracle, the runes, um, <laughs> the crystal ball scrying, if there's an issue and you're ignoring it, every single divination tool will keep telling you the same answer. Good question, Deb. Deb stores tarot deck in a little black velvet bag. Is there a right or wrong way to store a deck? So I have I have a little bag here for my Shadowscapes deck. It is a little velvet bag. And what I've got in it are some crystals. So I've got a piece of citrine, just tumble stones, clear quartz and rose quartz. Clear quartz in particular, I think, cleanses the cards. So I keep them in the bag and then I put the cards in with it. So when I do them up, crystals do their work in the bag and they're cleansing the cards ready for the next read. Although at the beginning of each time I take the cards out and do any reading, I tap them three times to clear any negative energy to make them ready for working with. So I've got the soft bag is another velvet bag and that has got amethyst in it i have a piece of amethyst in there and that does the same thing amethyst goes in the bottom of the bag cards go in and while they're sleeping <laughs> snugly tucked up the crystal cleanses the cards uh, the magpie deck i've got is a little bit different because i made a cloth so what i've actually got is them wrapped up in a cloth and when you open out the cloth, which is very difficult to do on here, it becomes the cloth to do the reading on. And the cards are wrapped up inside it and tied with a piece of cord. Uh, so I do cleanse those quite regularly. Uh, if I'm reading for other people, I will cleanse them every single time. But before I read, I do the, the three tap. Seems to work for me. Um, but that works quite well with that because then it opens out and you've got a cloth to read on. You don't need a cloth to read on, but I find if you're reading on the dining room table or the kitchen table, it just stops the cards from getting messy for a start. <laughs> um, I don't think there's any right or wrong way. I've got a stack of Oracle cards in a wooden box as well. So I, it has to work for you, I think. Another good point, Emma. Some say no one should touch the deck other than yourself, whereas others let the person shuffle them. I think quite often if you are reading for someone else, it helps if they shuffle the deck or if they cut the deck because then they add their energy to it. I clean every time after that, cleanse every time after that because it's got their energy on it. But I think it helps the reading. It's a personal thing. I think it is a personal thing. Uh, uh, there are... The links for Pixie Maid and The Witch's Cottage are in the comments. So if you want to have a look, um, they both have websites. They both have Facebook pages. Jane, psychic reading of people can be a bit too revealing sometimes. You have to be careful what you think and reveal. Yes. <laughs> if you are doing a tarot reading someone, uh, it's very easy to connect in with their energy, which is, yeah, it helps with the reading. But, yeah, you have to... <laughs> You have to draw back sometimes, <laughs> definitely. Damien, my mother is terrified of any form of divination. 
think it's due to her Catholic upbringing. Uh, people are often very frightened of the tarot in particular. It gets a bad rap, and I think much as, you know, the James Bond films are a big thing in our house. Pete is a very big James Bond fan. Mm -hmm. he, he doesn't help. What's the film with the tarot cards in it? Live and Let Die. Live and Let Die. And it puts the death card as death, basically, which it... It, it's about endings, it's about cutting ties, it's about finishing things. Very, very rarely is about someone dropping dead. <laughs> and I think Hollywood and films have given it a bit of a bad rap that it is a scary thing. Uh, Kerry, has anyone done a reading mixing Oracle deck with a tarot deck? Yes, absolutely. Absolutely. And if you make your own magpie deck, you can mix oracle cards in with the tarot cards as well. I quite often do a tarot reading and I will bring at least one oracle card into it as a focal point, as a signifier, a bit of clarity, whatever. Um, Sephora, how often should you cleanse, clear the wee beasties? Uh, if you, I keep the crystals in the bags because that cleanses them every time I use them. I tap them three times before I start a reading because that cleanses them. I think if you're reading for other people, then you need to cleanse them each time so that it clears the other person's energy. If you're reading them for yourself, then I would trust on your intuition. Uh, if you only ever use them reading for yourself, um, trust your intuition about when it needs to be cleared. See how Jane does, uses them in pairs with Oracle card backing up to clarify the tarot card. <laughs> Lizzie's had a Ganesha delivery. <laughs> Sephora tarot, tarot bag MB. Yeah, it is sweet, isn't it? I think it was Etsy that I bought it from. It's got a very nice moon gazy hair on it. Um, I've got one with the goddess on. And then I have another one with the green man on. They're very useful, very useful. Louise, thank you for the crystal tip. I have one tarot deck I've had 20 plus years, never used them. I have recently thought I'd like a nice oracle deck. The, the crystal works really well. I just keep it in the bottom of the bag. Jane, when I read for someone, I ask them to shuffle the decks, but I put the cards face down and see which ones want me to pull them out. It seems to work. Yes, you will find some readers will put the cards face down, deal them out face down, and then turn them up as they read them. Others will just put them all face up. It has to work for you. It has to be um, personal to you. I think ultimately get a deck that resonates with you. Don't read the book. Look at the imagery. Say what you see. Pick up the card. Say what you see. Look at the card. Say the first thing you see. First words that come into your head, first thoughts that come into your head, pick out whatever piece of the imagery jumps out at you first and focus on that. That will be the important part. This man here, he's got a non bread. <laughs> he hasn't got a non bread. It's a disc. <laughs> it's a coin. <laughs> but if, it, if I saw it first and the idea that came into my head was non bread, then I would roll with that thought. <laughs> Your intuition will not let you down. Say what you see and trust your in, trust your intuition. It won't let you down. Don't make things complicated. Draw a card in the morning. Jot down what feelings, what images, what words. Just write down whatever words come straight into your head and then forget about the card. Go back to it at the end of the day and see whether any of those words have connected or resonate with what happened to you during the day. Um, it's that straightforward. Keep it simple and trust your intuition. It does not have to be complicated. So thank you, everyone. Hopefully that was helpful. If you do have any more tarot or oracle deck recommendations, pop them in the comments. Um, I know we'll all be shopping today <laughs> for those that have been mentioned. <laughs> um, for anyone that's local to me, I'd love to see you at the Wandering Witches, Saturday 15th of April, 10 till 3, Cal Plain Activity Centre. Uh, it is a fantastic fair. Myself, Ness, Heather and Sue will be there uh, to chat with people and 
I'll have my books there as well. It'd be lovely to see you all. Um, otherwise, Friday. Waffling Witches on Friday, this Friday evening, 7 p.m. UK time. Uh, it'll be myself, Sue and Ness. We're doing a Waffling Witches live on the Kitchen Witch Coven and the Kitchen Witch YouTube page, just talking about general witchcraft stuff and answering any of your questions. We'll probably have cake too. <laughs> um, book launch, Saturday, 10th of June, launching this one, Gods and Goddesses of England, Saturday, 10th of June, online, 7 p.m. from my YouTube channel and this Facebook page. There'll be a talk about Gods and Goddesses of England and a free book giveaway. Um, thank you. Thank you all for coming over to Wednesdays with me. Really, really do appreciate it. You can blame the teenager. It's his fault. <laughs> um, it's one of those things you have to do uh, so yes do please pop your comments in that yes Naomi's oracle deck is beautiful absolutely beautiful I do have that one um, thank you everyone uh, yes Naomi where are you going to put all these tarot decks yeah got to build more shelves more shelves more drawers that's one of the things <laughs> thank you everyone for joining me um you're brilliant. You're awesome. Thank you for moving to Wednesdays with me. Have a good rest of the week and I will see you all again next Wednesday. Thank you guys.